questions, please come up and queue because from past year's experience, we always do not have enough time to answer our questions. So, do you have the first questions from the floor? Uh, what's your name and uh, where are you from? Um, okay. My name is um, Elaine. I'm from Whitley Secondary School. I want to ask Miss Ivy Singh. Uh, what do you plan your farm? <laughs> what do you plan your farm? <laughs> this is a question, what do I plan on my farm? Uh, when we started uh, the farm, I told my husband we must plant banana trees <laughs> because Chinese farmers are frightened of planting banana trees because they know there's a pontiana and a flower. <laughs> uh, because I'm not Indian, I'm Chinese, I'm not frightened, so I plant banana trees. And you know, we Indians love the banana tree. <laughs> so I'm one of the biggest banana growers simply because I'm the only banana grower. <laughs> And uh, we have, but we are a banana collector, so we have about 30 varieties of banana. But what we've also done is we've planted every plant that I grew as a child. So I have about 500 plants on my farm. And if you want to look at what grew in Singapore when I was young, come to my farm. We have everything. You name me something, we got it. Okay? Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other students? We only have 15 minutes. Please. <laughs> okay, please introduce yourself first. Awesome. Hello, my name is Brendan Goh. I'm from BD Secondary School. Yeah. I have a question to ask Mr. Julian regarding the future of Singapore. Like, are there any plans for like increase like power capacity and also uh, what are like future build city building plans for Singapore like are we building upwards or are we going for like underground kind of concept? Well, we certainly are building more power stations because our industries are growing, our population is growing so don't worry about power. Uh, we are also using solar panels to so that's taken care of. I think if you sort of listen, we are building higher, we are building underground at the same time, just to create more space. In fact, I think the Prime Minister announced a big project in Juro, where they built 100 meters underground, just to, just to store oil. It's trying to save the land that we have on top. If you go to the city, you have also noticed that the land is growing, the buildings are growing taller. Uh, and also some of the land users that are moving out is like Paya Lebar Air Base, so the SAF people will be moving to Changi, the Air Base. Uh, the port in Tanjung Paga is also moving out. I think you, you go to any city, you look at Tanjung Paga port, you wonder how come the port is there. Because it's our oldest port in Singapore, our first container port. But when the time is up, when we need the land for something else, we move the port further to Jurong, so that the whole area there can have more land that we can accommodate us. I have one more question, but is there any like, future plans for like to use power plants that run on alternative fuel sources like biofuels or maybe a fusion reactor power plant? Wow, well, we have a budding engineer in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, certainly. Uh, Biofuel is something that we have starting as a pilot in Jurong. If you want to come and see, you come and talk to me later. Uh, but solar panel is something we have on HDB flags. Uh, nuclear is something we talk about, but I don't think we dare to do it for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Tong from Siakis Tourism Secondary School. Uh, I'd like to ask, um, what is the Sam Kang Lee? Uh, other than the project you mentioned, what other projects are you, are you planning on looking at? I really want to do a project to improve the courtesy level of drivers in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> really, it pisses me all the time. Every time I drive, it pisses me. Uh, I, I think the main thing is communication. Uh, we have to find a way for drivers to communicate, you know, even even when they're in the cars. So, so I'll keep my plan a secret. Thank you. 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 Th
you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, there's more and more students coming up. Uh, just to take note, okay, in case our 15 minutes run out later during tea break, if anyone of these team wants to ask any question to our speakers, right, please feel free to do so. Alright, please don't be shy. Um, I'm Phoebe from St. Nicholas. I want to ask Colonel Ching, Cheng, um, how do you get people to come for any tea? How to actually draw spectators for NDP during We went to many organizations and we also sent out many invitation cards. Just to tell you secretly, we sent out more invitation cards than the capacity we can take. <laughs> so actually we have 20% more ticket being sent out. And we do prepare in case people come in and flood the stadium. We also have TV outside the stadium in case they cannot come in. <laughs> so this one calls for safety precautions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. Uh, Joanna from Crescent Girls School. I would like to ask this ideal thing. What's your vision of an ideal Singapore? What's your vision of the ideal Singapore, is it? Yeah. You know, darling, we all live in a world which we think is ideal, right? Even a blind person can think it's ideal. But the most important is you have a country where people are kind to each other, where people are, as you said, courteous to each other. So even if you're blind, if you are taken care of, right, it is an ideal country. And I'm sure with all you young people, the world will become a better place. Because you guys love animals, you guys love cats and dogs, and you guys have, uh, have never uh, you know, been taught to fight with your neighbor and kill your neighbor. As, yeah, yeah, as, as a, a lot of this gener as a past generation have. Like during my time, we were not taught that. But later on now, see with all these guns and bombs, do we really have to shoot at your neighbors all the time? Your neighbor should be your best friend. So the ideal world will be a world, and the ideal Singapore will be a Singapore where we don't ever have to feel threatened by anyone. And if they are feel, to, and, and the other countries will also feel that way, right? Where everybody is a loved creature. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivy. How about you? You just. My name is Jenny from Methodist Girls School. Um, can I ask Miss Ivy Singh, what, what sort of hardships did you face apart from the kidnappers and the British? Well, the greatest hardship was being frightened of a servant because she beats you all the time. <laughs> because if you finish eating and you don't push your chair back, she'll hit you on the head. Right? Uh, if you, you know, we couldn't telephone somebody to bring your book if you forget it, you stand on the chair. Your teacher will beat you. If this is the convent and the nuns, you do your homework wrongly, you know, the, uh, correction, correction, correction wrong, wrongly done, they take the book and hit you on the head and throw it out the window. Right, then hardship. We all work hard, even though we are very rich. At 6 o'clock in the morning, my father will turn off the air conditioning and we all kicked out of our bed and we go and cut lalang, we go and uh, feed the goats and feed the cows on the estate and all that, you know. We are rich, but we are not pampered. So, you know, those are all the hardships, you know, but of course, I was an A student, so studying was very easy, right? But a lot of you, like, struggle, don't it? If you have 70%, you're already a genius like me. <laughs> uh, so the other 30%, you don't have to struggle to get 100%, only idiots get 100%, and then go, go on to becoming scholars. So, just aim for 75%, the other 25 percent learn to. Uh, <coughs> the other 25 percent learn to dance, to sing, you know, to have confidence like me, and to look like me at 65. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Ray from Yangon High, and I have a question from the first Sam. Um, for the second video, right, you chose to speak in Chinese. Why is that? Because I just speak Hawaii better. No, I mean like, on the, like, why not English? Like, 
as a main language because your credits were also in English as well as your Chinese. I thought that the, the essence of what I wanted to convey sounds more poetic in Chinese. Can you see? Sounds. So it was just because it sounds nicer. Sorry? So it was just because it sounds nicer. Because it makes me look smarter. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, my question to is to all of you. What is your beliefs? Why don't we do a quick sum up for all the speakers? What is your personal belief? From my experience in uh, like hotel new world and all these uh, disasters, I believe Singaporean, be it everybody think that Singaporean is cannot jump out of the box, cannot get together, but when the crunch come. All of us will be able to stand together and we can identify ourselves that we are Singaporean. I'm still 30 years old, so my beliefs will change throughout my life, you know. And that's what I think you should believe, that your beliefs will keep changing and evolving as you go over and over. Uh, right now, I believe, and, uh, just to give you an answer, uh, right now I believe that I don't believe now. <laughs> but ask me again in five minutes time, I probably have one. Okay, I, I think that whatever you do, put yourself in the perspective of the other person that you're trying to understand. That's that's that. That's for me. Yeah. I suppose I'll just use the word trust. You know, if you trust your friends, you trust your neighbors, you trust your loved ones, you have a basis to have a relationship. And collectively, you have a basis to call this place a home. Well, for me, my belief is always uh, family. Uh, <coughs> that is the center of the universe. And whatever you do, if you have a close family and you believe in that, you can do anything. So whatever hardship you go through, that is always... Uh... <laughs> my belief is that human beings are not very different. Whether you come from China, from Nepal, from Syria, from Singapore, at the end of the day, if you put them all together to spend a week together, you find that we are all not very different. Right? So my advice is, don't set limits for yourselves. Because once you set limits, you're only limiting how far you can go. Always don't set limits, do your best, and really, the sky is the limit. I not only believe, I know the world is run by evil men and stupid women. <laughs> you know, the world, the world has so much, so much. We have so much food, we have so much water, we have so much everything. But evil men are always thinking of shooting at each other and killing each other and putting, you know, paying people the lowest salary and paying themselves a high salary. Right? You're a bit young, you missed you miss that. Uh, but basically, I believe when the balance of the world becomes better, when all our leaders and people in power are empowered by the goodness that was in us when God made us, you can be a creator, a destroyer, or a nurturer. And when we all believe that we are gods, and we can do that, that we can create, we can destroy, or we can nurture. And I'm sure your generation will make the world a much better place and believe that you can do it. All right. Okay, good. We have to thank you. So sorry for those who just denied. Okay, we will just leave you to two more questions. All right, for, for the one on the left and, and the right. Then the rest of you, please stay back later and talk to the speakers. So maybe the rest of you, can you maybe just move back to your uh, seats? So sorry about it. Yeah, due to time constraint. But uh, later we will really, I mean the speakers and then we will really hope to talk to you all. Okay? Uh, students over here? Yep. Hi, uh, I'm Lim Yen Ling Hazel from Broderick Secondary School. Uh, my question goes to Mr. Bernard Miranda. Uh, so, Mr. Bernard, um, uh, do you think 
that the, the, the SAF will be able to eliminate any threats to Singapore? Oh, so you want a short answer? Is yes. <laughs> um, why do you think yeah. so? Okay, the, the long answer is uh, well, because we have national service and uh, in terms of size, we have many NS men, like our good man here who is in his uniform, uh, with very good training and the technology that we have. And over the years, also much operational experience. So we have gone to do missions overseas. I think uh, we have the skills. What is important now is for people to to have the courage and the spirit to be able to do such things. Uh, do you yeah. think that Singaporeans have faith in the SAF? Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> because if they don't, then, you know, we, we will not win. Uh, the most important thing to protect us are people. Uh, you can have all the technology, the training, the experience, but if the heart of the people is not there, the enemy, even with a broomstick, can beat you. <laughs> and, yeah, sorry, but because you asked me a question, I have something for you. So, I, I went through my things last night, and I have this cap from my first mission, Task Group 5.1. It's 10 years old, but I kept it brand new, it's for you. Name. Sweetheart, what's your name? Hazel. Hazel, Hazel, when you mention threat to Singapore, do you only think of an invading nation? What about the haze? Why don't you address that question to uh, the general and uh, the, all these people here? Will the SAF be able to handle the haze? Because Indonesia, all Indonesia has to do is burn 40 days and 40 nights. We in Malaysia will both be dead, darling. <laughs> Think about it. Alright, we have one last question uh, for a lady. Hi, um, I'm Azrin from CHRJSJC. And my question is for Miss Ivy Singh. From your amazing sharing, you've become a great inspiration to me. But despite the very optimistic personality you have, everyone has ups and downs, and I'm sure you have some. And I'm just wondering what are your inspirations to get back up? That's a very, very good question, darling. And you are like me. You are very beautiful, I can see. My, my, this thing is shining on my cataract lenses. Are you half Indian, half Chinese? No, I'm pure Malay. Pure Malay, huh? You're beautiful like me too. Now, that is the most important thing. You yourself. Some of you are not as beautiful as me, you can't help it, right? But all of you can see, all of you can hear, hands and feet, right? And if you stand up, all of you can walk, right? So that is already a great blessing that you have. So like for me, when I was young, Whenever I'm down, I, my father always says to me, think why you're special. So I go to the mirror, I look at myself, and I tell myself, I am special. Nothing will get me down. And if somebody gets me down, I get rid of that person. <laughs> That's why I'm the worry. Okay? I never get mad, I get evil, right? But usually, I also think, in my old age now, when a person tries to get you down, that person actually has a problem, you know? <laughs> right? That's why the fellow is jealous of you because he's not beautiful as you, not as tall as you. Are you a netballer, by the way? No. Hey, CHIG, you better be a netballer, okay? <laughs> so, you know, when a person tries to get you down, always look at that person, right? And when, you know, ask yourself, why is that person trying to get you down? And when you are down, look at yourself and say, I'm already very fortunate. And if, you know, if I'm still around in Singapore and you are down, call me. My number is 9816-6342. Okay? All right. All right.